there, thanks for tuning in. This is yet another metal detecting video. And this first hunt is a one I did just in the local fields around my place on a night. Not to be confused with night hawking, I was hunting with permission, but it was at night. So this is the first hunt, local fields around my place. Yeah, I'm hoping that's a musket ball. I was reading quite a solid 86. And it is indeed a musket ball. This is more or less just right outside my house. I cannot believe it. I must have been over here a hundred times. I literally just switched the machine on, swung it twice, bang, there's a signal, dig it, musket ball. Get in there. This one was reading as a fairly inconsistent 84. And by the looks of it, we've got a half penny. An old halfpenny. Yeah, I'm not going to get a date off that. Could be Victorian, could be Georgian. Who knows? This one was really shallow, and by the looks of it, it's another musket ball. Looks like this one's hit something though. Unless it's one of those dodgy shaped musket balls, the later ones with the little grooves on, perhaps. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Definitely some sort of projectile, and that gave a pretty good signal. It was reading between 74 and 82. A little bit bouncy, as most lead is, but that's another good find. This one's reading 84, so I'm kind of hoping this is a coin. It, no, it doesn't look like a coin. But what it does look like is another musket ball. Get in. I hardly find any musket balls around my place. But uh, <laughs> that's two within about half an hour. Excellent. Now that to me looks like yet another musket ball. Oh, it is as well. Get in. You know, seeing I hardly find any musket balls around my place. And this is about two minutes after I found that last one. So that's three in total for about three quarters of an hour. Absolutely great. Now this is a strange one. I thought it was like a lead, uh, like a small musket ball, obviously made out of lead. But um, it appears to have been carved into a certain shape. Have a look at this. Those lines definitely aren't natural. It doesn't appear to have a hole through the middle, so I don't think it's been a part of any sort of jewellery or anything, but um, that's quite an unusual find. This is a wet hole. It's filling up with water as soon as I've dug it. But this is a target that was reading kind of mid-60s. It's bouncing around a little bit. And by the looks of it, it's a big bullet. Uh, I'm not too good on calibers, but it's probably either a 303 or a 308, I would reckon. All I know is that it goes very fast, and I wouldn't want to be in front of it. Now, this was a very shallow target, and it was given quite a tricky signal. It's actually a thimble. Unfortunately, it isn't a silver one, but it's a, it's a thimble. And people used to wear these on their fingers, apparently when they were gathering in corn, just to protect the ends of their fingers. Now, this isn't very deep. It's probably only three inches deep. But it's another musket ball. And this was given a really dodgy, tricky signal. I almost didn't dig that one, but I'm glad I did, because it's yet another musket ball. Another tricky signal, and another lead target by the looks of it. Possibly an early spindle whirl. It's got a hole in the middle. It's not decorative at all, but um, it's quite old. Possibly ranging from Roman to medieval. Not the normal shape of a spindle whirl, but I would say that's possibly what it is. This was a canny depth, possibly about six inches or so. Give a good signal though in the mid 80s. Ah, uh, that's an old penny, a, a pre decimal penny. <laughs> Absolutely up to the eyes in muck. Yeah, it's raining, it's cold, so I'm not going to clean that off until I get home. But I'm pretty sure it's an old penny. Yeah, that wasn't too good. It was alright though. Plenty of musket balls, which is always nice. Now 
this was loaned to me by Spartacus One, a fella called Gary, great friend of mine, lives just up the hill from me. And this is a tumbler. You get a barrel, or tumbler or barrel. I call it a tumbler because it kind of tumbles the stuff. That sits on there. Switch it on, it rotates, and you put special cleaning things in here, and it cleans up all your messy, manky, horrible finds. Now he's already got a little bit of stuff in here, that's an old barrel tap that I found a while back. It's semi-clean, but it needs a little bit more cleaning up. See, it's still got a lot of green on it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to chuck some more stuff in there, and give it a clean up whilst I'm out today. Here's some of the little stainless steel shapes that you get to put in. Oops, I've lost some. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> i drop some more of them in. There's already some in there. It's already got a bit of soapy water in there. And then I'm going to put the top on and give it a good barrel in whilst I'm away. Right, I'm doing this in my shed because as you can hear, it's quite a noisy process. So I'll check in on this when I get back tonight. You don't need me to tell you that the Deus is a good machine and I've been finding out just how good it is on previous hunts. Today I'm going back up to a site where I found probably hundreds of coins, uh, the odd one being silver and I'm also going to dig the ring pull or pull tab signals. When I went over this area with the e-track I ignored those signals knowing that by where they were hitting on the screen they were ring pulls or pull tabs, so I ignored them. This time I'm going back with the Deus, and I'm not going to ignore them. So if you want to see how I get on, please keep watching. Now before I get started on this next hunt, I just want to show people that I don't find good stuff all the time. The, the good finds don't just jump out the ground, and you have to dig through a lot of rubbish to get to the good finds, especially in trashy sites. So I'm going to show you the trash that I've dug before I show you the good stuff that I've dug. There you go. It's frightening, isn't it? There must be dozens and dozens of bottle tops. Oh, there's just all sorts of absolute rubbish in there. Bottle tops, pull tabs, rusty lumps of metal, scrunched up bits of foil, wire. Oh, there must be, I don't know, 150 digs worth of stuff there in order to get to the good stuff. So don't for one minute think that if you're serious about detecting you can get away without a fines pouch. You need to put all of that rubbish somewhere. Incidentally, this is the fines pouch I've been using. I forget the exact name of it, but um, I think it might have been Superior Finds Pouch, and that's from King Digger. The link is in the video description. Well, that's a decent start. Just lying on the top. Pound coin. Now, this one was reading as, I think, 65 to 67. That's a pretty good imprint of... Queen Elizabeth II, Florin, two shillings. Unfortunately, because it's quite a late pre-decimal coin, there's no silver at all in that. This one's probably about ooh, six, seven inches deep, maybe. Gave a cracking signal of 89 to 90. And it's a pre-decimal penny. In remarkable condition. Queen Elizabeth II. 1967. Here's another coin ball. This was reading 50, so I'm thinking it's either a big 50 pence or a quite modern two shilling florin piece. Let's have a look. Nope, wrong on both counts. It's a five pence. This one's reading quite a solid 84 to 85. A coin ball which yields a ship. Hapenny. I think it's a ship hapenny, it is half pence, pre-decimal one, 1940. That's George the Sixth. Very crusty though. Great signal, reading 84 to 85, so I'm kind of hoping it's... Oh, it's not silver. I was going to say I'm kind of hoping it's silver. 
It's a threepenny bit from oh, 1950s, 1960s, 1965. It's reading a 78. It's possibly a little pendant or something. Oh, it's a little ring. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. It's a tiny little crushed ring. Oh. And it says on the inside of there, sterling silver. Get in there. Well, I come out for some peace and quiet and listen to it. It's blooming awful. This looks Georgian. It is. I was reading 20... No, not 20, man. This was reading 92. And it's a George III penny. From 1799. That's got good detail on it. I'm pleased with that. Good. This is pretty small. I'm getting worried that it's a half pence. A decimal half pence. Because I've had a dozen and one of them, but it isn't. It isn't at all. I think it's a threepenny bit. And if it is, it's been ages since I found one of them. It is get in there. 1921. It's only 50% silver, but that's a really small silver coin from about five to six inches. Look at that. What an absolute beauty. Get in. Get in there. 1921. Here's one I dug up whilst the chainsaw was riving on. It's reading a solid 77. It was from about four inches down. Ah, oh, man. Half pence. It's my nemesis. Another coin ball from that same area. This is all within about two feet of each other. This is reading... Ooh, what was it reading? Late 70s, I think. I don't think there's anything in there. Ah, oh, there is. Ah, and that's another half pence. This is another one reading to 76 to 77. So I'm thinking it's another modern half pence. But I'm hoping it's not. It's small. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. This is an yet another one reading 77 and I had a beastly job tracking this one down. <laughs> it's a little bow tie. I have no idea what that's off. Maybe it's a little pendant of some sort and I doubt very much whether it's silver. But it gave a good signal. I've had about 10 digs all within the space of about a square metre. They've all been reading 80 to 81 and they've all been trash. But this one isn't obvious trash and it's reading 80 to 81. Something in there and I'm hoping this one is actually a coin. Get in there, it is a coin. It's well packed in that one. Ah, uh, it's another halfpenny from George V. Lovely tone on that. Kraken condition. And that one is 1917. Yet another coin ball, reading 81 to 82. I'm hoping it's not a modern penny or a half penny. Oh, it's not. Very good. It's a 1920 penny, in reasonable condition. Get in there. Now then, I've just dug a lump of iron out of here at approximately nine inches, and there's a signal directly above it. This is what the detector picked up on, and it was reading 82 to 83. So I'm hoping it's something special, just because it was above some iron. Nope, it's not going to be that special. In fact, it's going to be my nemesis back again. They've been haunting me all day. This one's reading 83 to 84, and it looks like a halfpenny. 
Ooh, it is, and it's in good condition. 1934. That's a George the Fifth Hapney. In good, Nick. Very good. Now then, this is a good dig because in this hole is, uh, I think, a half crown. Unfortunately, I don't think it's a silver one because it was reading 68. And I've also got a coin ball from the same hole as well. So, from here, what is that? Oh, 1948. It's a 1948 half crown. No silver in there at all. A year earlier would have been 50% silver. It's George the Sixth half crown. 1948. See the state of it. Anything after 1947 hasn't got silver in it in the UK. I know in the US your silver coins did go on for a little bit longer than ours. Maybe it's into the mid 60s, but I'm not entirely sure. Our silver content finished 1947. They all come out like that. So then, what's in the coin ball? Well, let's have a look. Oh. A modern penny. <laughs> Look at this fella, what a devilish looking goat. Absolutely awesome. What an excellent, evil looking creature. Those horns are simply awesome. I just hope he doesn't butt me with them because he's getting awful close. You can tell it's a goat by the eyes. And also because of the fact that it looks like a goat. What an awesome goat. Look at that, the devil rides out. This is reading mid 60s. From pretty deep and, oh. I know what I want that to be, but I don't think it is. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Look, whoa, man. I don't know whether this is real gold. Oh, it's clean though. It's damned clean. It looks like gold. Ah, I can't see any hallmark. I can't see any hallmark. And that looks like a little dragon or a lion or something. It's like a seal ring. And it's damned clean. No corrosion at all. I like the look of that. I like the look of that a lot. Get in there! This one was reading mid 70s, and we've got another pre decimal. Um, we've got another pre decimal here, <laughs> I'm still in shock. I can't speak properly. <laughs> this side's really worn. I'm not going to get a date off that. Here's one from right next door to the halfpenny. This was reading mid 70s as well. So I think this one's going to be another halfpenny, perhaps. Or it may be a surprise. That's the beauty of coin balls. Whatever it is, is a surprise. Sometimes a good one, sometimes a not so good one. Ah! Oh. And it doesn't get any worse than that. My old nemesis comes back to haunt me. Well, I almost didn't dig that one because it was such a feeble signal. But I'm glad I did, because it's, uh, who is it? It looks like a young Victoria. It is, it's a young Victoria, Hapney. 18, ooh, what is that? 1881, maybe? It's in reasonable condition for the year. This was reading 87, and it's something goldy coloured. I'm getting excited. Oh, I'm not excited now. No, it's just gold coloured. Uh, it looks, feels almost like plastic. I am a Catholic. In case of accident, please call a priest. <laughs> Excellent. Now this one was reading 88 to 90 and it was a fairly quiet, choppy signal. But I chose to dig it. And just here, it looks like we've got a silver sixpence on its end. But it was reading high because it's a Victorian one, therefore it's, oh wait, sterling silver. 
0.925 silver and that's 1838 there you go what a great find I'm absolutely loving it that's a threepenny bit 1921 sixpence from 1838 a small ring which has written on the inside of it sterling silver but there's no hallmark so I'm a bit dubious this one again has no hallmark I can't find any blue tack or anything to, to try this seal out so I can't see what it says and I haven't got a magnifying glass although I've got good eyesight it isn't good enough to see that unfortunately I imagine there's a lot of people out there who want to buy a Deus and when I was using it today I just oh, I don't know I was gonna say I fell in love with it but I fell in love with it months ago I've got to admit for the first couple of months I was a little bit skeptical I was hanging on to the e-track and then I was starting to get into using the Deus and thinking do you know this this does it really pulls up small objects from way down just with that little 9 inch coil and I haven't even bought the bigger coil yet I'm still using the 9 inch and I'm still having great success with it I'm not really feeling any need to get the 11 although I will at some point when finances allow because it is quite expensive you've seen what it can do today it's an excellent machine and I'm no expert with it I have got it set up to my requirements it works well for me I do dig the tricky signals, but that said, practically anybody can pick one up and make great finds with it. It's that good. Now I mentioned earlier on about the barreler, the tumbler thing, and there's some things in here that Gary brought back for me. Some of which I'm going to use in the display that I'm going to make for the people that live in the big mansion house where I've been hunting lately. So I'm going to tip these out and let you have a look to see how good they've cleaned up because I was pretty impressed when he showed me. I maybe should have tipped them out on a bench, I think, instead of on decking. I've just lost the Georgian coin down there. <laughs> There's more in there than I thought. A load of stuff. Right, let's have a look. Mm, it would probably help if I spread these out a little bit. But that is a... which way is he looking? 
the George II Farthen. It's come up not too bad, considering that that was just totally crusty and green. That's a George III halfpenny. What else is there? There's all sorts. Of, oh, that's that. Uh, that's the bat thing I found up at the mansion. That's cleaned up pretty well, and that's going to look really good inside the display case. That's definitely going in because that's an unusual artifact. I, I really like that, and it's cleaned up beautifully. There's an old thimble there. Unfortunately, it isn't a silver one. That one's a, a bauby, Scottish bauby, hammered copper. That is a Victorian thingy. I'm not sure of the exact name. It's for lacing up your boots. It would have had a hook on there and a handle on this side, and you'd use that to drag the laces through the little eyelets. That is, I mean, I don't even know where I found this, unfortunately, because that is a sword hanger, according to Gary. Um, it would have little rivets that went through your belt, and this would be like a hook, and your, your sword sheath would hang on that. So that's pretty old. I think that says 1798. So that's George the Third Halfpenny. Oh, it's a nice little badge there. I didn't see that when uh, I first looked through that. That's come up pretty well. Little military badge. Nice little buckle there. I think I'm going to use that one inside the display case. Looks Georgian. Queen Victoria Farthen, which unfortunately has got a hole through it. 1879. That is a trading token from 17 something or other. Um, now Gary said it was probably something to do with St Andrew, there's a dude there standing behind a big X and St Andrew was crucified on a cross that wasn't like a T, it was like an X, because um, if I remember rightly he said he didn't want to be crucified in the same way as Jesus or something like that, personally I wouldn't want to be crucified at all, I would have just ran away, but that's the back side of it, so that's a trading token. And that's a, a lovely find as well. That was all green and cr crispy as well. So that's that's nice. I'm glad that's cleaned up well. Uh, that's a George III Irish halfpenny. This was just all green and really crudded up. But it says G H D. Uh, and apparently that was a spoon. And you'd, I forget what Gary said it was. It was a seal spoon or something. So it would, you'd actually use it as a, as a spoon, but it had your initials on it. It was almost like a, a, one of those seals that you used to put on into wax. That's a bit of a spur that you'd have on the back of your boots. This would have a little pointy wheel on, you'd stick that into the back of the horse to make it run faster. There's another George III halfpenny. Oh, that side's pretty good. 1807. That's come up really well, that one. I might actually put that one in the case with that one inside it, that would look quite nice. A big old lock. That's cleaned up really well. And see there, that's where you put the key, in the back of it, not in the bottom. Really strange design. The stuff you've just seen me go through here was tumbled by Gary over the last few weeks. And there is some pretty good stuff in there. That is really just out of the bag of shame. That's the stuff that didn't make the finds pouch, well, didn't make the, the good portion of the finds pouch, where I keep the coins and the, the obvious good finds. So it's definitely worth keeping everything that you find, and if you've got a tumbler, stick it in a tumbler, clean it up, and you can really see some good stuff coming out of your own bags of shame. Oh, actually, one thing I forgot to tell you, and I don't know how I missed it, because it's been sitting in that pile of cleaned up junk, there's a George the Third cartwheel penny in there. Still needs a little bit more cleaning up. But that's in pretty good condition. I'm just looking at the viewfinder there. And if you're seeing that as well as I'm seeing it, it's in pretty good condition for something that was encrusted with green muck. That's the other side of it. 1797. So if I can clean that one up nicely, I'll probably give that away in a future video as well. It's quite a nice coin. Now those of you who watched my last video will know that I did a giveaway there. And that was for this. It's a Garrett Pro Pointer cover. They're really excellent. I've got one on mine. 
it's up to the eyes in muck it just needs washing under the tap and it protects the pointer really really well so in the last video I asked you to start your comments with competition if you wanted to win that and now I'm gonna pick the winner right this is my happy hunting with Hitler and the Stoat video I asked people to write a comment starting with competition if they wanted to win that great pro pointer cover you can see the amount of comments they are not all of them start with competition but quite a lot of them do I'm just gonna blast up and down here like this with my eyes shut I will stop I'll go straight along and if it lands on a comment with competition that person will be the winner simple as that so here we go shutting my eyes now and stop depths of history doesn't start with competition so I'm gonna he didn't enter the competition unfortunately that's quite a coincidence actually because I think it was his advert at the start of that video so he won something anyway he won an advert but uh, he obviously didn't want to enter the competition here we go shutting eyes now and stop all right here we are we're just there we'll go along ah, they didn't enter the competition either that's Harlan Morrison so I'll do it again come on somebody's got to have entered this competition there's loads of you have uh, close my eyes now and stop where's that right along at the bottom Aha! there you go somebody's won it Glyn Thomas I'll just zoom in so you can see him Glyn Thomas I'll add a comment under here and I'll also send you a private message to say that you've won well congratulations well done you've won that I'll send it off as soon as possible and now I'm gonna give this one away this one is the same as the one I use this one's for a Garrett but this one is for a Minelab Profind 25 so if you've got a Minelab Profind 25 and you want to win this great cover for it just start your comment with competition and in the next video I'll pick the winner for this one in the same way as I did for the winner of this these are pocket put and takes made in a trench art style and they've been made from the auxiliary fire service buttons that I found up at the mansion site where the fire service was stationed during the Second World War and these coins reflect that we've got a 1944 and a 1945 this was reading as a nice sprightly 76 on the Dios and it looks like it's a button in pretty good condition oh it is that's in cracking condition look at that AFS which I believe stands for auxiliary fire service and I'm sure you've seen my video on trench art where I go up to Gary's house and he's actually making these for me well he's making them for himself but he, he did make a couple for me this is the little spinner with the put and take game it's just a very basic gambling game and the lads in the first and second world war used to regularly play this game and make these in exactly the same way one of these things is going to go into the display case that I'm making for the people who operate out from the mansion the other one I'm going to give away not in this video I'll give it away in a future video but that's just a really nice keepsake done in a trench art style to commemorate the Second World War now this is probably the last thing I wanted to see in my garden but they're badger tracks the back paw front paw see the claws there we've got hedgehogs in the garden and they eat all the slugs and snails and that is a bad sign because the badgers will eat the hedgehogs there's nothing more for me to say now thank you very much for watching and I shall catch you in the next video your support is awesome
That's gonna take some editing. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. That goat possibly wasn't Satan. It might have been Pan. Got a hole here. I've got something here that's. Oh man. Um. I'm sure there was something more I had to see. Oh, half pence. It's my nemesis. Punching like a 90 year old man. <laughs> it would have been terrible. I will report back on my findings as to. I don't think there's anything in there. What else did I have to say? Nah. Can't remember. That's the sum total of the finds today. Quite a lot of coins. A little bit of... Mm. Red look. Whoa, man. There you go. I'm doing this in my shed because it is, as you hear... Luke, it stands up. <laughs> what does that tell you? It tells you absolutely nothing. And it's something goldy coloured. I'm getting excited. Oh, I'm not excited now. I've rambled on about 10 minutes about the E-Track and Dios with no direction whatsoever. Well, I think without further ado, I will pick the winner for... Mm. Ah. Oh, yeah. Get in there. I'm just making a video. Ooh. Oh my. I like the look of that. I like the look of that a lot. Well, I'm gonna get a pizza. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my.